This one's another fantastic episode with Abhishek Bachchan. The only difference, this one's in person. In person podcasts are always a very, very different vibe. I feel like I made AB Junior speak straight out of his heart. You guys be the judge. What I do want to say is that we've covered everything from his business interests to how he's looking at life right now, to how he's looking at the future of cinema, the film industry, the future of India in general. And also, of course, Bob Biswas, which is out on Z5 on the 3rd of December. So make sure you check it out and make sure you follow The Runway Show on Spotify. Every episode is available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. We're a Spotify exclusive now because of you guys and your support and your love. Keep supporting us. But for now, slip in to this very organic, brotherly conversation. Abhishek Bachchan, you're looking great. Thanks, man. You seem like you're excited. I am. Welcome to the Ranvi Show. I'm excited about being here. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm done with doing this uh, virtually with you. I agree, one hundred, one hundred percent. So I'm happy. Thank you for for having me on your show. Yeah. Before the cameras got rolling, I was telling you how you're really easy to talk to. Like your energy is very easy to kind of get into. Do you know what I mean? Uh, no, <laughs> but 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 thank you, but thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, you know what happens also, if I may, a lot of the time when when we're doing interviews or we're about to interview somebody, I know because I've done a few where I've had to interview other people, we get very, we work ourselves up about the person that we're talking to, and that person gets that vibe, and then they kind of clam up. I think an interviewee get kind of feeds that vibe, also we kind of clam up. Mm. Uh, actors generally aren't very comfortable talking about themselves, so we build this false wall around us that keeps people at bay it's it's more of a defense mechanism why is that i don't know man i've never been like that i i'm bad i just say it but um, i know you're a thinker so i'm sure no, you thought think there's nothing wrong in thinking there's but nothing wrong in thinking but i think you know possibly i mean i'm just you know winging it here but we we kind of bear our soul on a daily basis mm. as our profession but we entrust that soul to very able hands of our directors. And that too is a huge trust exercise. So you're like, dude, mm. I'm allowing you to manipulate my emotions. Just be nice. And that, I mean, it's like um, back in drama school, you do trust exercises. You know, I mean, the first one being stand there and just fall back and your partner will catch you. You've got to trust them. And I think that comes from the fact of just being able to emotionally trust somebody. And um, it takes a lot of time, reassurance and confidence to be able to do that. Mm. And then imagine you're put in a situation where you could be at times speaking to a, a rank stranger and here you are, they'll ask you some very, at times... Um, personal? Personal is fine, I mean, I get it, but intrusive at times. And you have to be as honest. So it, it, it's a bit weird, no? It's no, like you it. meet somebody for the first time, you talk to them about your entire life. Right. We had Tapsi Pannu on the show last month and she said that the nature of being an actor is a little weird. She said, did she allow you to say anything? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was a... Tapsi Pannu was a little No stopping, freight train. It was, it was nice. Yeah. But uh, she said that because you guys have to kind of go into emotional depths of your own mind. By you guys, I mean actors. Yeah. Um, it kind of puts you on the edge a little bit in your real life. Like you are, you can get irritated easily. You can get angry easily. And that's just an outcome of the nature of your job. Do possibly, you think that's, yes. Possibly. You, you felt it? I'm sure there are times, I mean, um, for example, if you, if you have a bad day at work, mm. I mean, it takes, it's, it's very easy to just fly off. Because I mean, we're, we're very brittle, right? Emotionally. Mm. Because you have to be brittle slash fickle mm. with your emotions. Mm. You know, uh, scene, you know, your, 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 the love of your life has dumped you and walked away and your dog has died and action and you're, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a ridiculous situation, but you've got to find some emotion that triggers the right expression and you, and cut and you're back. Okay. How is it? Okay. Let's have some coffee. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's just crazy. It's a switch on, off, on, off. So you do tend to get fragile that way. So I can get, I get it. I mean, are you, are you able to control it more with age? I think so. Mm. Um, I think. With time, um, you just get a better understanding and grasp of your craft. Mm. It never gets easy, 
but I think you're more comfortable controlling it. Mm. You know, interestingly, I was asked this earlier today, I was doing an interview. And we were discussing Dia, who's the director of my film, Bob Biswas, and she's a kid. She's 25, 26 when she shot the film. And I, what I was saying, is, I, the, the context was, I was like, I was amazed that at such a young age and being her first film as a director, she had such emotional depth <laughs> and such a mature grasp over her, her craft mm. of filmmaking. That stuff doesn't come to you naturally. It's stuff that you have to earn and learn with just time. Mm. You know, I'm sure if I put it in your context, when, when you first started your first podcast, this is what you wanted to do. So you prepared for it in whatever way, not just physically in terms of equipment, but also your subject matter, the way you want to talk. But today, there is a certain comfort zone. There's a confidence that, okay, kisi ko bhi jab mere samne, I can have a conversation with them. Whether it's good or bad, that we'll see. But <laughs> with time and doing stuff repeatedly, you, you do get a certain amount of confidence about how to do it. And the same thing is there with, with, with performing. Mm. When I first started off, there was absolute fear. Firstly, if I was given, I mean, I'm not kidding and uh, might not be the right thing to say on your show. But say it, do when, it, I, when, it. When, when I was given my first dialogue sheet, my only sole objective was Learn these lines, don't get them wrong. And all newcomer actors will tell you the same thing. Mm. Let me mug my lines, let me just say the lines properly. You don't even start thinking about how you're meant to perform those lines, mm. how you're meant to emote, how you're meant to play with it. With time, when you become comfortable with the surroundings around you, with the process of filmmaking, when you get comfortable with something as basic and rudimentary as somebody saying, cut one more. Mm. When you first start off, I remember when somebody said, cut one more, I took it personally like I've done something wrong. That might not be the case. And even if it is, it's okay. This isn't a stage play where you only get that one continuous take. You have the, the, it's the, you have the availability of technology that allows you to redo the shot. Mm. And do it for what reason? To get it right. Mm. So as long as the end product is fine, it doesn't matter. There are no subtitles saying they took 100 retakes. It doesn't matter. They see the end product. They don't see the toil and the tribulations before that. Now, when you have that kind of a situation and you start dealing with it and you start getting comfortable with it, that's when you start just kind of exhaling and chilling in mm. front of the camera and getting comfortable around your surroundings. And I think if as an actor, what is our job, right? We're, we're trying to place ourselves in a scenario, however fantastical or realistic, but you're trying to inhabit that environment, that zone as convincingly mm. and realistically as possible so that the person watching it believes that you're actually experiencing that. You're not performing it. Mm. That's why they say acting is an acting, it's reacting. Mm. In order to do that, there are a lot of other factors in filmmaking you just have to be comfortable with. Right. So I think with time, that comes with a certain amount of experience and maturity where you just learn to just exhale and just be. I find myself a lot more at peace in front of the camera yeah. now than I was before. And that alone will just give you the grasp over. It's like you. I mean, I'm sure today you feel a lot more comfortable. I mean, uh, having a mic in front of you is second nature. Your facing into the mic is something that just happens mechanically with you now. 100%. Also, also going into other people's energies. And I also think you've described careers in general, man. Careers always begin with... Oh, yeah, yeah, be absolutely. Okay. Then, you're, you're hyper about it. And then you just <laughs> ease into it, you know? Yeah. And once you ease into it, it's when you can start playing with it. You can right. have fun with it. Bob Biswas is looking pretty sick, honestly. Thank you, man. Thank pretty you. crazy. I also feel... I don't know if you saw the comments on the last episode we did. You've got a heap of love. And if you haven't, I urge you to go I, see I read comments. a few of them. Uh, go read them now. I'll, I didn't read all of them. Go read them now. I'm not that vain. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. See, the nature of podcasts is that they stay online forever. All right. And people discover it with time. Someone's friend tells them, oh, you should go check out that conversation. That's ah, okay. how podcasts grow. So see the way people have spoken about you. Okay, I'll do they've that. Obviously, do tonight. They've highlighted the N-word and they've used you as a, an exception. Oh, really? Yeah. And they've oh, said okay. that we don't... nepotism, okay. Yeah. yeah. They've said that this guy is, is yeah. like great. Yeah. This, is, this is real well, talent. It's not, a, it's not a bad word. I mean, when you said N-word, I thought you were going to say something no, racial. No, 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 no. Like, the N-word from yeah, a film perspective. Yeah, nepotism is there. We said it, <laughs> you know. And um, now, it's an important conversation, Ranveer. It's, it's an important conversation. Just, I mean, feel free to talk about it. It yeah. wasn't my intention to bring it up. No, no, I'm absolutely, I'm very happy to talk about it. 
uh, I think it's a conversation that must be had. I think all conversations must be had. Okay. If even one person feels something, uh, I think it's very important for the film industry to always introspect and, and try and correct something if it is wrong. But in order to do that and to judge whether something right or wrong, we must understand it in entirety. Sure. Unfortunately, in today's day and age of speed um, and in social media where a verdict has to be passed immediately, we tend to have a rather myopic view about stuff. It's very important. Um, I've been on social media now for 11 years. 2009, November 3rd, I joined Twitter. <laughs> I still remember. And at that point, the slightest thing would trigger you off. Today, you might read something. My first reaction is, wait, let me do some R&D about this. Mm. Let me check. Is this, are there any other views? You know, try and get an entire 360 degree perspective. Um, nepotism is uh, an important conversation because this industry has been painted uh, as um, an industry which only works with its own. Mm. Uh, there's, this, there's this very apparent divide between insiders and outsiders. And I understand where that comes from and, it is a, and it's true to a certain extent. We tend to forget that the majority of the successful people are not from the industry. They've not come from here. They're all outsiders that have come in and have achieved. We also tend to forget that nepotism is a part of every industry out there, man. Yeah, but, but nobody wants to hear that, right? So let's mm. not, there's no point getting into it because there's always but if, but that. Fine. Um, let's not get into the normal conversation about it. You're talking about an industry which needs to work with comfort. Coming back to what we were discussing before, you're dealing with emotions. Mm. So you need to trust the person you're working with. I would much rather, I would perhaps think, would want to work with somebody that I know because I'm going to be dealing with my emotions. As an, I'll speak as an actor and as a producer because those are the two fields I'm qualified to talk about. As an actor, I would probably be more comfortable working with somebody that I have a rapport with so that I can feel secure emotionally that this person is going to take care of me, take care of the film, do right by the film. It's going to be very difficult to deal with these, pre uh, with these um, points of what I've, we've discussed to somebody who you don't know at all. Mm. That could be one of the reasons. Plus, it's always been like one big, large, dysfunctional family. Mm. <laughs> All right? It's just the vibe. Yeah. I mean, I'll say to you today, and I'm saying this consciously, knowing the kind of discussions that happen, I agreed to do Bob Biswas because Sujoy's daughter was making it. I had not heard the script. Sujoy came to me. I've written a story about, um, about a contract killer who loses his memory and he's trying to regain his life and his past catches up with him. I said, okay, interesting. Contract killer loses his memory, throws up a lot of conflict. Nice. I said, are you going to direct it? Are you producing? He said, no, I'm producing it. I said, who's going to direct it? He said, my daughter, Dia. I said, okay, done. He said, no, 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 hear the script. I said, no, it's done. Mm -hmm. He said, no, no, I don't want you to, I want you to hear the script. And if you don't like it, don't do it. I said, Sujoy, it's your daughter. I'm doing it. That's me. Mm. That's my personal choice. I've always put relationships ahead of personal and professional gain. Yeah. Does that make me wrong? I don't know. I was thankful. I was very happy and majorly relieved that it was such a fantastic script and it was such a great character and that Dia was just brilliant. Mm. But the point is, Ranveer, I'm not sure if I said this to you the last time. Um, you know, truer words weren't said when I reached the premiere of my first film. And it was at the Liberty uh, Theatres in South Mumbai. And uh, after the arduously long drive from Juhu all the way to Liberty in South Mumbai, um, I remember reaching there, there's huge crowds and this huge roar went up when I got out of the car because, you know, making his debut. The entire film industry had been invited to the premiere. Those are the days of premieres. And <laughs> it wasn't just a red carpet where you go take a few selfies. It was a proper premiere, army band playing, all that kind of jazz. Great fun, you know, the full glitz and glamour. And here was, you know, this young colt who was about to, to make his debut. And obviously the entire industry had come to wish us and bless us and obviously see what we're all about. Mm. 
And I remember walking through the gate and when I reached the main door of Liberty, I remember Yash uncle was standing there, Mr. Yash Chopra. Now, I was born in front of him. I've grown up playing in his house. Uh, he's family. Uh, I took his blessings because obviously I was going in for my premiere. He's such a senior and respected person and he means what he does to me and my family. And uh, he hugged me and he said something to me in my ear, which I'll never forget. And truer words were never spoken. He said, your father brought you till here. Remember that, respect it. From here, you have to walk on your own two feet. Because if tonight the film isn't good, by tomorrow morning they'll know and nobody will go see your film. Mm. And that is, whether you like it or not, is the truth. Yeah. It's not about being given another chance. I say this with a very heavy heart. I have a lot of friends who are from the industry, who are children of prominent actors, who haven't managed to carve a niche for themselves. And they haven't been given a chance. Mm. And please let me tell you, and please, I, I'm saying this with absolute humility. If you are given that chance, there is a very practical reason behind it. And that reason usually has to do with business. Mm. And the business is, okay, for example, they might not be the biggest star, but if I make a movie with them, my budget comes down X, I can sell it for Y. Okay, that makes business sense. Let's do it. Mm. It's a business, man. You know, at the end of the day, yes, um, why would a producer not want to work with somebody that they've worked with before? or a family member, there is a comfort zone over there. Yeah. There are certain liberties you can take. There's an ease of working and understanding. But it's always been about, can this person bring back the returns on the film? Yeah. And if they can't, you don't get a job. And now I can speak from personal experience. Uh, I've been in that, that receiving end. You know, I've been at the end where I didn't get a job. Mm. I've been at the end where I've been replaced by countless films. I, I mean, I, I forget today. I've been at the end where I was getting calls from certain makers. And six months later, when my films haven't done well, not only do they not pick up your phone call, they don't call back. I've been in the zone where you've gone up to a maker and say, look, I'm a huge admirer. I'd love to get the opportunity to work with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll call you this, that. That call never comes. Yeah. The important thing is not to get bitter about it. The important thing is to understand that it's not personal. Mm. If you're worth it, they'll call you. Yeah. You know, um, I have three things to say as an outsider, trying to understand the industry from the inside and speaking to people from the industry. The first is what you said about business. That while we criticize nepotism, while the general audiences criticize it as for what it is, yeah. people fail to understand that, uh, say, star kids, so-called star kids, do guarantee a certain high amount of returns. Versus someone who's absolutely not from the industry. In the first film alone. In the first yeah, film. Yeah, because there's that, there's that whole hunger to say, okay, what is this guy's yeah. son or daughter exactly. going to do? The second thing is um, that thing you said about being on set. Hmm. A, a film set or a video creation set, yeah. there is a certain energy that goes. So when everyone has to be in sync, it's like yeah. playing in a band. Yeah. So the familiarity helps. Absolutely. And the third thing I'd... I try to recall what Ayushman Khurana said on this podcast. He said that there is opportunity out there. If you're willing to work hard enough and if you're prepared enough, you will find the opportunity. Often people who blame nepotism and things like that uh, aren't kind of gauging the situation from a 360 degree perspective. If you really want something, there is opportunity to be grabbed. But you just got to work for it. Absolutely, man. Mm. You're talking to somebody who sits here who comes from a place of, of immense privilege of which I'm very aware of, very appreciative of, and I work my rear end off every day, not to disrespect that uh, lineage. Mm. But that lineage was given to me by a man who left a well-paying job in Kolkata, <laughs> came to Mumbai, stayed, slept on the bench on Marine Drive mm. for nights, mm. uh, entered a film contest, lost, went to All India Radio, got voice rejected, struggled and made his way, he's paid his dues and he continues to at the age of almost 80 work 16 to 18 hours a day. Mm. It's not easy, man. And, and you've got to, you've got to stay humble and you've got to, st like you just said, at the end of the day, it's your work that counts. If your work isn't good enough, the audience won't want to see you. If they don't want to see you, nobody's going to give you a job. So as a podcast, I'm always looking for moments in the conversation where my guests' eyes light up. Mm -hmm. Your eyes just lit up more than normal when you <laughs> about spoke about dad, your dad. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's that's love speaking up, dude. That's love and respect. Mm. You know, to see Okay, I'll tell you a very personal story which I generally don't like to do cuz I like my family is my family. I'm very protective, but since we're discussing this and I really feel it gives a great insight not only to the greatness of the man, but it'll serve huge inspiration to anybody who's out there looking for inspiration. Um since my father's um fatal near fatal accident in 1982 on the sets of Cooley every sunday there's a crowd of people that come to meet him outside the house all right um my previous house pratiksha every sunday there used to be thousands of people traffic used to come to a standstill it was crazy now when we live in our other house in juhu jalsa they come there and he religiously does everything in his power to be there at 6 o'clock in the evening on sunday to go meet the crowds and they come in in thousands and there's a huge traffic snarl for the one to hours that it happens and he goes in 5 10 minutes he waves he tries to sign as many autographs now take as many photographs and selfies there'd been times after i became an actor that he took me and i call it my simba moment <laughs> you know in lion king when mufasa holds up simba and says yeah my son so i say that's my simba moment and i go there and i very reluctantly wave because obviously i mean come on nobody's there going to wave at me when you know mr bachchan is standing behind you I wave at you, man. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, see the things he has to do to get me on the podcast. <laughs> so um, I go. I mean, reluctantly, but obviously you come, you shyly wave, and then you step back. And I mean, it's his. It's his domain, and they're here for him as they should be. W- one day um, we came back in, and crowd was very robust, and so I said, you know, I really wanted to ask you all these years. I said, how does it feel? because you know receiving that love from the crowd in the flesh oh my god it's that energy is something else i said how does it feel and he's very um yeah he's not somebody who's like, oh his mind he's not one of those he just smiled i said no tell me i mean come on you know it's been like this for over 20 years can you imagine since 1982 every sunday they come and they want to wave out and give him the love and all I like it must feel great you must feel on top of the world. I would I mean the few times when he's taken me up then I've just waved and they oh Abhishek you feel empowered you just, you know you you just everything just I said come on felt great huh I said what do you think come on tell me you're thinking like wow you know I'm the king of the world what do you feel and he left and he went on the next day we were having dinner I mean it finished and just the two of us sitting at the table he said you know yesterday you asked me something he said how do how do I feel I said, "Yeah, how did you feel? You feel great?" So, what do you think? He said, "The only thought that's going through my head is, you think they'll come next Sunday?" And that hit me. I was like, "Wow, man! Here's this guy. He's accomplished all there is to accomplish, and some. And his biggest thought is, what can I do to work hard enough to make sure that they come back?" so you're not being you know it teaches you you cannot even at that position be complacent you cannot take it for granted and i mean you know please allow me this i mean he's d amitabh bachchan there is not a bigger star and better actor than him in the world yeah. and his attitude is not dude you know leo move aside i'm the king of the world you know <laughs> he's like dude i got to work harder cuz please these guys have to come back Success. i mean it's amazing dude i mean the, what, you get that kind of inspiration at home for me and that's what i aspire for so i mean you know you, when you talk about all this stuff about getting it for grant no man i've seen that man work and i and i try and emulate that mm-hmm. i mean what more inspiration do you want this is saying which i'm remembering right now uh, the quote is success isn't bought it's rented and the rent is due every day oh yeah absolutely more so now than ever Yeah. 20 years ago it was it was due every Friday now <laughs> it's every hour. Yeah. Yeah. What's that like because you've seen that and you're seeing this and Well I, I still came into it when it was still transitioning. Mm. I mean uh, for my dad I mean like he, they didn't even know when the films released. Mm. There was no promotional tours there was no thing. They didn't even have to do photo shoot for the posters they used to be hand painted. Mm. You know and they were all doing multiple films you know 14 15 films at the same time. Yeah. My question to you after that was I mean as his son as someone who's observing him why do you think he's hustling as much as he is like what's his why part of it i think is his force of habit 
That's the only way they know how to work. You know, and I think they come from a generation where that generation was about providing, being um, the breadwinner and making sure you do whatever you can to keep the family happy, healthy and safe. Yeah. So for that, you just, you just, yeah. you know, you grinded it out every day. And that's all they know how to do. I mean, I know, I mean, my father can't be on holiday. I mean, after the first three, four days, he's like, okay, you know, what do I need to do? <laughs> and everybody's like, please get back to work because mm -hmm. we can't handle this energy around us. Yeah. It's just, you know, they get, they get impatient. And I, I, I've seen a lot of his generation. I, I, I had the pleasure of working with somebody that, that is very, very close to my heart and, and God rest his soul, really. Um, was, you know, it was Chintu uncle, Mr. Rishi Kapoor. And he was the same thing. I need to keep working. It's just, it's, it's, it's part of their programming. Can I say something about yeah. you? Here? Yeah, sure. I, I see this change in you lately. And you do? Yeah, and even on the last episode, you spoke about being in your 40s and priorities changing. Yeah, yeah. And there's this new kind of energy in you, which I think people are also picking up on as a, as a guy. Really? Yeah. I think I'm a bit more settled. Dude, also, you're even more energetic than you used to be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I love to work, but I just feel, you know, somewhere I, I might not, I've kind of figured out somewhere what I don't want to do. Which is? Well, there's certain things I don't want to do. Like, like kind you'll of never know what you want to do, but I, okay, ye to nahi karna. Mm. When you first start off, and I think that's part of the reason why you're so hyper about your job, is you just got the, I mean, when I first started acting, I was like, wow, I've got a job. Two years I've been trying to get an acting gig and it didn't work. You're just excited, so you do whatever comes your way. Mm. Now I'm like, okay, I know what I want. Are you happy? I'm and very happy. Happier than you've been ever? Yes. And what is that well, because that's, of? That's my daughter. Mm. I think um, my daughter really put things into perspective. One thing that made me really like you when I was a kid was that in some interview you had said that Dilemma by Nelly is one of your favorite oh, songs. Yeah. Am I right? Absolutely. So, and that was the same for me it's, as well. It's Ashwarya and my song. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great piece for yeah. this interview. But, uh, yeah, you know what she did for me once? What? We were dating and for, for a present she got me, she got Nelly to autograph his mic. Oh. And it's, in, it's on my table. It's, <laughs> it was awesome. Um, Here's something I've got to ask you, is it? And I sang with him. You sang with Nelly? I've done a track with Nelly. Wow. Um, it was one of my favorites. So I did this track with my dear, dear friend Raghav, who's just a brilliant singer of Indian Canadian. Angel Eyes Raghav. Yes. Oh. So Raghav approached me and said, hey, I'm doing this one song and you got to do it until the sun comes up. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. And he's like, oh, by the way, Nelly's on it. I was like, let's <laughs> do this, man. Come on, it's Nelly. And so yeah, you should check it out. It's fun. Nelly had said that when he held his child in his hands for the first time, that was what changed everything yeah, for him. He's from done a, a track career. on it as well. You should hear it. Mm. He's done a track that he sang for his son. Mm. And you felt the same about your daughter? Uh, well, at that point, not, not when I first held her. I was just so excited. But I think, you know, it dawns on you that I want to do stuff for her. I want to I wanna make her proud. I want to make her happy like my father makes me proud. You know, and um, you have a reason for doing what you do. I don't know if I'm bursting your bubble, but I think she'd already be proud of you, dude. I and hope so. I hope so. You know, my, my mother always told me that uh, it doesn't matter if you're a good actor or not. Make mm. sure they remember you as a good human being. Mm. And I think once you do that, um, you know, we get so engrossed and so lost in the hustle of life. And like I said, it's important to know what you don't want. What you want will keep changing. That's fine. And it's okay to change your mind. There's nothing is cast in stone. But when you first start working and you become independent, you want to do everything. Mm. I want to, in, in, in a film actress contest, I want to be the most successful actor. I want to be the number one star. I want to be the biggest name ever. I want to have the best endorsements. I want to, you know, I just want to be the best, everything. And slowly you realize that that all means precious little once you're done playing with it. It's good, important to go through that. And then, you, you know, they all say water finds its level. You find your level and then, okay, this is what makes me happy. Mm. What you want and what makes you happy are two very separate, different things. Mm. And that's going to come to you with time. The laws of nature are something which I really started listening a lot to. Because there's a lot of wisdom in it. 
there's a reason why they say, oh, the elders, you know, and and at times, especially today's generation, which is so well informed and educated. Yes, nobody's saying that you have to blindly listen to the elders, but there's a certain amount of wisdom that comes with age because you've seen that much of life. Mm. Um, there was a very nice quote uh, I read the other day. Line said by a father to his child, always listen to my advice, not because I'm always right, but because I have more experience in being wrong. <laughs> Isn't that nice? It's so yeah. nice. Yeah. Nobody gets it right all the time. Yeah. But with age, you just have more experience of getting it wrong. So you know what not to do. Mm. So, yeah. What does your dad think about what's happening in your professional world? Uh -huh. As in not, not Abhishek Bachchan's professional world. In your industry now, today. With this he's very world. excited, dude. He's at the forefront of it, right? He's at the cutting edge. <laughs> he's the one leading the pack as always. I think he's having a lot of fun, Ranbir. I think there was a time in the 70s and 80s where the leading man had a lot of pressures on them. You had to be in a particular mold. You could do certain things, but you definitely couldn't do some other things. There were a lot of do's and don'ts, all of that. Um, I feel somewhere he feels more liberated today because he gets to be part of stories and be part of characters, which, I mean, he, he's kind of... He's rid himself of all the shackles. Mm. So he's really enjoying himself. And if you see, be it uh, even in a 30 second commercial, he's having a blast. Mm. You know, you see him do movies I and mean, you see Pa or you see a Piku or you see a Gulabo Sitabo. And it's just, it's so much fun. And at the same time, he can do a Badla, you know, which is dark. <laughs> and so, so I think he's really just having a blast. Did he see the Bob Biswas trailer? Yes, he did. What did he say? Because I'll, I'll tell you what a lot of my friends <sighs> said. They said that Indian films are getting darker in a very lovable way uh, the whole the whole world of content nee, yeah, he didn't say anything like that he said Are, interesting interesting i want to see the film now <laughs> but then he wrote a very sweet tweet which 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 is very touching he said i'm very proud to call you my son and um, i mean what more do you want right mm. what what do you have to say about the film what was it like and do you also feel it's getting darker cinema no. in a in a very good way no i i think there's a big distinction between what's happening in the ott space and what will eventually happen in cinemas break this down yeah, so we're in a transitional phase right now because the lockdown happened, theatres shut down, so suddenly OTT platforms picked up and everybody said, okay, we cannot release over here. Now, because there's been that huge influx, now is when the audiences will start settling and decide what they want to watch because mm. the ease of choice is a lot more on a digital streaming platform because here, man, it's on my phone. <laughs> I don't have to. Um, I don't have to go to the cinema. I don't have to get out of my home. I don't have to commute, bear the traffic, buy a ticket, find my parking, buy the concessions, find my seat. Somebody else is sitting there. Move them. So it's it is a process when you go to the theaters. Mm. When you go to the theaters, it's about an experience of watching a film. Mm. Gotcha. OTT isn't about the experience of watching a film. It's about watching the film. Hence. Because of that, and the only focus is on the film, your focus is purely on content. And your mm. content has to be excellent. If it's not, pause button, gone. You're never coming back to it. If I'm in the movie, I'm not liking the movie, I'm like, ah, forget it, I'm bored, but I'll sit here for three hours, I bought the ticket, might as well sit in the AC. You're not going to get up and leave. Mm. Right? So you have that. So now it's going to start settling. They're going to be, I mean, the, I, I predict... There'll be a time where different digital platforms will have different kinds of audiences. Hmm. You know, your Hotstars, your Netflix, your Amazons, your uh, Sony Live, your Z5s are all going to have different profiles of, of, of audiences that patronize it. Everybody uh, is not going to want to pay the subscription for all of them. So they will decide that the more I feel good on which platform I will see them. That in itself will divide the audience. So, mm. like what happened, uh, you know, in in theaters, there was the 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 single screens and the multiplexes, where the multiplexes were perceived to be the the more discerning audience. They they you can show a different kind of film because there were smaller theaters. You didn't have to spell, set, uh, sell so many tickets. So you know those medium to small budget films could also be made and end up doing well. Mm. A similar thing I predict is going to happen in OTT. So they're going to they're going to patronize content which has to be very engaging yeah yeah and i feel in time to come not immediately in time to come 
you want to go to the theater to see those larger than life films because you want the physically large screen mm. and you want the experience of watching the film yep. so there'll be content where which is experience based 100% i'm dying to go see suryavanshi in the theaters and whistle and clap and throw money and <laughs> dance yeah i'm not just going to see my friend um akshay and ajay and ranveer and katrina and rohit's film i'm going to experience it as well and rohit has the brilliance to understand that so he makes his films in that way mm. it's all there to entice you into that experience yeah. um you know i was having a conversation with someone here about how algorithms control our life right, right. like because of social media that's what all of us are using right. constantly algorithms also change your behavior and there's going to be behavioral changes that happen across uh indian towns cities villages right right now what's happening in the indian cities is attention spans are getting lower because yep. of short form content sure. which is why things like bob biswas people will latch on to hmm. where it's pacey where the lighting is different where it's a little in your face the story is gripping storytelling will never ever die never. that's that's the truth never. even if everything goes short form i think bob is very well placed hmm. he's right in the middle of that spectrum yeah it was intended for a theatrical release then hmm. the pandemic happened we got delayed by 10 months our set was our set was standing for 10 months mm we resumed we finished post happened theater still won't open we weren't sure we finally took the plunge and said look as a financial decision as well it's not fair to tell the producers just keep holding on mm. we finally decided we felt z5 was a wonderful platform came on to it okay cinemas are slowly stumbling back to normalcy but i'm not i i don't regret that because i like i said bob is sitting in the middle of the spectrum it's something that is going to cater perfectly to the crowd that watches ott content and will tick the boxes that they require and the same for a theater going audience so i'm just happy that the film is finally coming out yeah. and also, people are going to get to see it also a lot of ott success is word of mouth and social media based man so yes because there's no other barometer in yeah. in in in, uh, in cinemas we have the box office mm. but you know even then runvi if you see we're one of the few nations that's obsessed with collections um when i was in college in in boston there was one entertainment magazine that would possibly publish in a small box and i still believe till date the majority of our audience in india don't really know what the collections are it's all word of mouth mm. you know um picture achhi hai nahi hai people standing outside the theater listen ask the guys coming out and that is the greatest publicity mm. we can do extensive marketing campaigns it's your first trailer and your first visual which the audience is going to decide are you watching it or not yeah. uh to give you an example in the english context um i grew up in the 80s and 90s so tom cruise is a huge part of our growing up all right and twice in my life have i been tongue tied Okay I mean come on I I I eat dinner with Amitabh Bachchan okay uh, I don't I don't get starstruck twice in my life one of them was with Tom Cruise cuz it's just a magical person yeah. just what a guy um so present in the moment anyway that's a different story there was a teaser of Top Gun Maverick now if you grew up in the 80s and the 90s Top Gun was the film the coolest thing to ever happen and now to see top gun maverick mm. and um they don't show him throughout the trailer it's just a voice over of i think it was ed harris's character that's talking to him saying you know you're still a captain you should have been a two star admiral or a general or whatever and this and that you know you're a dying breed and uh your time's done and then they cut to me says maybe so sir and he's looking older than he is he goes maybe so just not today <laughs> that's it and you're like dude <laughs> i have to see this film this i mean that's it yeah. you don't have to show much it's just you've managed to entice the audience say i got to watch that mm. i have no choice for example i was telling aj just before suri when she's released the point is not whether people are going to go watch or not they have no choice as an indian movie lover i have to go watch suri vanshi mm. there's no option to not watch i have to see it it's like uh, when avengers came out you had to go see it yeah and and that's going to be all the films that do well in the theaters absolutely mm. 
like they you know that they're going to be a hit before they come out absolutely um you know but again i i want to highlight the space you're in mm-hmm. see i'm also a branding advertising person mm-hmm. which is why i mean when 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 musicians hear songs yeah. they able to break it down and say oh whatever yeah, you know yeah, this yeah, is how yeah, the guitar yeah, sure an advertising and branding person is able to see brands right. in terms of this is how abhishek bachchan is perceived or this is how xyz is perceived sure uh you're perceived as like a thinking content consumers actor now okay it's it it that's what's Fair happening enough. yeah sure i believe even you have insight sure. on that and sure. i i think you're playing to your strengths there as well like uh okay <laughs> to give you a sports reference uh your lebron james in la and now you know you've got a yeah. play more play making game okay. than than what you used to do in miami All right. You got the reference. I got it. Uh, Not currently with La- the Lakers current <laughs> form, but yeah. Okay. Uh, my point is that you're a thinking consumers actor. That's what I feel. Uh my question to you is how do you work that muscle because I feel like you study a lot of stuff outside of cinema as well. Like you're someone who studies culture, you're someone who knows what's up in the world of social media. Hmm. What's that like because in an actor actress's success i feel there's a lot of other factors other than just the craft mm. you know there's people mm. skills as x factor there's knowing where to position yourself and uh, the g- big gift of podcasting is that you get to deep dive into people's minds yeah. and when I've i'll tell dive- you um i had a rough introduction into the world of films as an actor mm. and i've i've spoken about it publicly um i've never shied away from it because it happened i mean it's right there i mean if i don't talk about it, it doesn't mean it didn't happen mm. it's there it's there for everyone to see um apart from just not being ready or prepared enough uh or as good enough as i should have been and i admit that to myself today i think also a, a, a large contributing factor to that was i was very removed mentally aesthetically from indian cinema make no mistake i grew up on my father's film sets but from the age of 9 i was in europe studying so my my formative years my training in acting and the world of cinema and stage from my boarding school days was english hmm. uh was shakespeare was oscar wilde was franz kafka you know was chekhov stanislavski then when you go to acting school you learn the method and you know, you you exposed to everything that's western my upbringing my best friends most of my friends till i was till i was 20 21 apart from the few that i had from childhood who i'm still in touch they were all foreign so all those friends of mine from from boarding school and college were all foreigners Hmm. so a huge cultural influence of multicultures from which were not just india and i mean i spent my holidays in india so i had a, I had a huge dollop of that as well my parents ensured that we were uh, in touch with our roots but a large part of the influence was foreign my outlook was that my speech was that um i mean my wife tells me today the first time she met me i was actually um I think just back from college I was I just started working for my father as a production boy. He was making a movie called Mrittu Data and I was sent on the location scout to Switzerland because I'd grown up there they said oh he'll know the locations let him go. And um in those days you know I I was there and and, and my dear dear friend Bobby was shooting his first film Or Pyar Ho Gaya and uh I was at the same location I went to say hi to him and he said oh come for dinner. and uh, that was ashwarya's first hindi film and that's the first time i i actually interacted with her and uh, whenever she talks about it, she jokingly says she said i couldn't understand a word of what you were saying <laughs> because here i was this kid from an international boarding school then went to boston came out and you know i must have had some really heavy accent <laughs> at that point of time and she's like what were you saying <laughs> so you know my int- i was very foreign in that mm. sense my influences were foreign you know um when you talked about acting you think about you know you had equal dollops of of a David Niven and a Sir Lawrence Olivier and John Gielgud and the great Marlon Brando in directors you wanted to read Alia Kazan's work and stuff and that was it you asked me to speak about cinema and about acting at this is what I discussed with you because that's what I was taught you t- talked to me about English literature I talked to you about Thomas Hardy and Shakespeare you know um what I didn't realize was I needed to consume a lot more local Indian content 
and I didn't take it seriously and I didn't understand the depth of what he was saying. When I spoke to my father from college and, you know, my family was going through a very difficult financial time. And I just felt as a son, although I might not have been qualified at that point in time, but I needed to be with my father. I needed to, you know, even for moral support. He's, he's a big guy on moral support. He likes to know his family's around. I said, I just, I can't be here sitting in Boston when my father is, doesn't know how he's going to get dinner. And that's how bad it was. And he said it publicly. You know, he had to borrow money from his staff to put food on the table. Um, I just felt morally obliged to be with him. And I called him and I said, uh, you know, Dad, I think I want to leave college halfway and, and come back and just be with you and try and help him whatever way. At least you'll know that, you're, that your boy is next to you and, you know, he's there for you. So he was very emotional. He was very touched. He was very moved. And, but he ended the rest of that conversation, which obviously I won't have a good. But he said, I'm glad because, I mean, I, we'd already discussed that I would like to be an actor. He said, I'm glad. Come back. Bhasha <laughs> Sikho, because Shakespeare doesn't work over here. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, 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 okay. And I realized that today. So the, I was very out of context. When I first came here, I mean, I can't count refugee because JP Saab is just a class apart. But after that, when I came to the industry, people were making movies and I was like, dude, what's up with you guys? You know, why are you doing this? Why are you wearing these clothes? Why are you dancing? I don't know. You know, this isn't cool, man. This is what is meant to be cool but that was like 10 years ago I was mm. doing that when I was 12, 13 mm. I know that's not cool this is not the kind of music you should be listening to you know I just had um, I, I didn't look down upon them I just didn't get it mm. and I realized that I needed to get it so I did the absolute wrong thing is I went for the other end and I said okay I'm going to do the most commercial most loud every, I'm just going to go with that let me get used to it but I'm trying to get used to something that I just don't understand and it took me a lot of time to start accepting it and understanding the brilliance and beauty of it. I mean, truly, the brilliance and beauty of it. One of my favorite actors is Govinda. Mm. There is a genius at work over there. But you need to understand where he's coming from. To somebody who doesn't understand the world and context of Indian cinema, they're not going to understand the genius of Govinda. Mm. Now, with time, you started getting comfortable in this environment. Plus, that environment has also evolved. And now that streaming platforms have come in, they've suddenly brought world content at the yeah. push of a button. India is watching Squid Game, which is from South Korea, and Money Heist, which is from Spain, and watching Family Man at the same time. Multi multicultures that are just clashing in, and they're seeing it seamlessly. They understand it. They've evolved. So somewhere, I think I have managed to accept and understand what Indian audiences truly love and want. Mm. Plus, subject matter and the audiences evolved to, to understand and accept something which is a bit more universally accepted. So the two have kind of met. And I think I'm just at the right place at the right yeah. time. And I've understood and, and found my chi at the right time in yeah. that sense. 100%. So I think that's why people, you might think that, oh, you know, you look more comfortable and at ease. See, social media gives the users the ability to break down people yeah. heavily. People can see Abhishek Bachchan's feed and tell a lot about what's in his head. When we put up a questionnaire about what we should be asking you, one of the burning questions was, ask him what role he had to play in Amitabh Bachchan's whole NFT situation. Uh, <laughs> so be sure, be sure you've had some uh, blockchain yeah. Yeah, uh, well, education well, as well. He came and asked me, he said, what is this? He said, don't think about it, just stop it. But look, it's just fantastic that he's always just been such a leader in these things. And, and who better to do it, right? I mean, when the whole proposal came and we were weighing it out and we were discussing it, I said, just you have, you, you're possibly one of the three or four actors that can currently still do it and mm. do it at a large scale. I'm mm. sure everybody's going to jump onto the bandwagon now, but you're always going to have that first mover advantage. And I'm so happy that he listened and he did it. Dude, you know, you keep talking about how your dad is like very humble. I, I'd say the same about you after interacting with you. You, yeah. you. you genuinely have a strong sense of humility. And I also feel that um, there is some role that you've played in your dad's second innings as well, but it's behind the scenes and it's something you don't take credit for. No, I can't. I mean, uh, see... Possibly, if we're discussing it, possibly because I was around. And like, like, I, like I, says, I was talking about Dia the other day. And I said, I saw this new girl with this new language that she was coming in with. And I was, I, I'd love to observe it and feed off that energy because it teaches me something new. Mm. 
maybe that could be that I just had a different vibe. I had a different approach to doing things. And he might have been reluctant at first. But then he said, hey, wait, you know, this is a new generation. Let me just try and accept it. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. I really don't know. But uh, and like they say, you can, you know, uh, there's that famous saying, I'm not trying to say this about my father, but you can only bring a horse to water. Mm. They have to drink it themselves. You can mm. have brilliant inspiration around you. You got to get inspired by yourself. Yeah. One last question before we end this conversation, yes. which is that how did you get so deep into tech? You're a, I mean, the whole tech startup world. My knows. dad, very honestly, I remember from my dad's always loved gadgets, you know, from, from his eight millimeter camera when I was a kid to his first VHS video camera, to his record players, to his stereo systems, to his VHS, then to his laser display, then to the first DVD, then to the Blu-ray. He's always been about the new gadgets and that, I mean, seeing that I've always been into it. But also it's tech, something that's, tech startups? That's, that's really interested me. Now, that's, that was the foundation of it, mm. right? Another thing that currently I'm really enjoying. So that, I mean, that naturally progresses into a tech startup, for example. But what really the current zone I'm in is I just love the whole India story. Mm. You know, I, I'm, I revel in the fact that if you can be lucky enough to be part of the India journey. And today, gone are the days where we felt... Um, subpar to anybody. We're world class, man. We're, we're world leaders today in every, every field. And to be a part of that is something that really excites me. So currently, from even from when we last spoke and we discussed this briefly, I'm very excited about it. And it doesn't have to be just tech. It can be anything. It can be consumer goods. It can be anything. About something that comes from India and is very Indian at heart, keeping our culture in mind. And we take that to the world. Yeah. So that's something, that's a zone like... I'm really, really excited mm. about right now. Indians are inherently hustlers. And I think in the same way you spoke about how we're inspired. Hustlers in a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in a good way. The Westerners uh, don't understand that kind of hustle. <laughs> um, in the same way that you said that international cinema is affecting cinematic mindsets. Yeah. Uh, international uh, tech culture and startup culture is affecting the average Indian mindset of yes. Indian college students. So we have like... Entrepreneurs we know were 16 years old, 17 years yes. old, who've already sold startups. You know, That's what's uh, I was having this discussion only the other day about um, a story. We were just having a story uh, sitting and talking about it and talking about um, a story about, about a couple who are highly qualified and but unemployed. So the, the, the mudda that we wanted to discuss was unemployment. And how, you know, it's, it's a huge burden because you, you might be brilliant. Uh, you've educated yourself, you've come in the top two percentile of the country, but you might not get a job and you're unemployed. And we hear these, you know, really sad stories of MBA students who are doing clerical work, you know, being, being a pune somewhere, being doing a delivery job or driving an Uber. And when this, this example was given, I said, we can't make this film. So the creative team I was sitting with, they said, why? I said, did you hear what you just said? You have an MBA student who's working as a delivery boy or riding a Uber. They're not unemployed. Today's generation, if you are unemployed, you're a loser. Mm. Nobody's employing you. Start your own business and get on with it. Yep. I think that's the thing that has changed literally like in the last five years. With, if you see the, the burgeoning of startups in India, what is that? Indians who are always working and our work ethic is unbelievable. You know, uh, I mean, it's like the story of 7-Eleven. I was told that the store 7-Eleven in America was started by an Indian because they're the only ones will willing to open at 7 and shut at 11. Because our work ethic is such. Mm. You know, we are, we'll work 24 hours a day if we have to. Yeah. Today, if you're unemployed, your generation, the youth, the 18 to 22 year olds are going to be like, Why? Start something for yourself. So that whole, I mean, it's, it, I mean, it's so weird. Five years ago, unemployment was such a big topic. Today, if you're unemployed, and it's a huge issue, but today you're also expected to say, okay, nobody's giving you a chance, create your own chance. Mm. My generation would have never thought like that. Yeah, yeah. Abhishek Bachchan, talking to you is, is great, dude. Like, Thank just you. Genuinely. Thank you. Like I was looking forward to meeting you in person when we'd done our last interaction and doing another episode and you gave me like, you know, sort of a sequel. Um, you know, I'm going to kind of cross a line with you yeah. and just say that 
You're not going to kiss me or anything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I've, I've been I've been thinking about you and your family just you know as human beings since we last spoke because of the insights you gave me, and you guys in many ways are surrounded by blessings. Mm-hmm. But I also feel that a movie can be made on your lives because of everything you've gone through, <laughs> and I feel like that's why God keeps giving you guys things, dude, because you've maintained the humility through it all. So just, I mean, that, oh, that's all you. I wanted to say. Uh, God you so bless much. you, dude. You're, thank you. You're, you've just got the best energy. And from a career perspective, I can't wait to see everything that you do. Thank you. I, hope, the you, next, I hope you like it, man. Uh, I really it, hope it'll be like good. It. As I said, you know exactly how to hit the mark. Be it Bob Biswas on Z5 or be it any of your other projects. It's going to be good. Thank Pe- you. People know this about you and or the audiences love you. Well, thank you for giving me this opportunity. No, for real. Thank you. Thank, thank you, brother. You. Thank Appreciate you. it. As we say, no mushkar. <laughs> so we just got done with the podcast. Um, Abhishek has just left this room. He's one of those people whose energy like really rubs off on you. And what I said about humility on the episode, I truly mean that. He's the same guy in front of the camera and the same guy behind the camera. And that's why so many of you guys are drawn to him. That's why so many people in India are generally drawn to him, are generally so in love with Abhishek Bachchan. I also strongly feel that this is only the beginning for him. Uh, projects like Bob Biswas, it's just a part of what he's going to do going forward. But make sure you check out this project. It's looking extremely promising. Remember, it's out on Z5 on the 3rd of December. And make sure you follow the Ranveer Show on Spotify. Every episode's available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. Here's looking forward to even more in-person conversations with Abhishek Bachchan and a bunch of other film stars. Please tell us in the comment section or on our social media, who else would you guys like to see featured on the Ranbir show? We will definitely try our best to bring them on. Please give guest suggestions. I'm expecting a bunch of guest suggestions sent in to us in the comment section and on our social media. Remember, we're going up to two episodes a week now. Therefore, lots more podcasts, lots more information, lots more beautiful conversation, and lots more positive vibes. See you soon. Goodbye. That's it. Switch it off. See you.